everyone, it's Amy, and I am back to finish the scrolls. I'm going to see if I can get this done before Papa gets up this morning. So we've got them. They're nice and sturdy now, and I put enough rocks in there that they're not too shaky. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to antique our little scrolls with some brown. And I'm just going to put some paint in this little cup here and add some water to it to really thin it down because I just want to just get a little bit of um, brown in the creases and this will get in the creases and then and I'm not minding if I get it up there because I'm going to wind up painting those brown in a little while so that's all right just smear it on here Whoop. It doesn't have to totally be perfect. It doesn't even have to be totally covered. But there we go. That looks good. Get it down in those cracks. And then I'm just going to take a paper towel and just wipe across it a little bit. I really should go this way sideways because most of my creases go up and down so if I go up and down I'm just going to rub all the brown out of the creases so I'm going to go sideways instead and that's just leaving some of that brown on there and taking it up a little bit get it around the edges there and there that looks pretty good so see it's not much but there's a difference. It just looks a little more antique. So I'm going to do this other one. Hopefully I have enough paint left in here. If not, we'll just mix up a little more. Get it right in the cracks. Because that's what you're going for. The paint you want to get into the cracks, and then when we put the rub and buff on it, um, that you want to just be on top of the cracks. And it gives you the dimension and really brings those wrinkles out. And I'm kind of going with the cracks so that the brush gets down in there. And if you have one that you see where it's kind of deep, then if you go sideways against it, it'll run down into that crack. There we go. That looks good. Put my brush in my water. And then just rub across that a little bit. And there we go. Now we've got those both antiqued. I hope the lighting's good enough so it's real early and dark outside. So I tried to get the best lighting I could. All right, now those have to dry just a little bit. And I want to paint the wood pieces with brown. So while we're waiting for those to dry, I'm going to take my empty brown <laughs> paint here. brush back out. Okay. And I can go ahead and hold on to it here because it's really not very wet. The worst I'm going to do is get a little paint on my hands. Okay, and this will take a couple of coats. I'm not even hardly in shot, sorry. And um, so I'll get one on here right now. This is not the best brush for this. 
Okay, I don't want that brush. I'm going to grab this one. Because I don't want to get a whole ton of brown right up here on the corners. Because actually, that's the part of the scroll you're going to see the most. That's the part that's not going to be covered um, by our paper. So, even though we've already antiqued it, I don't want the dark brown paint in great big blotches there. So this paintbrush will be better because it's a nice flat, flat tipped paintbrush. So we can kind of get right up to the edge and pull out like that. There we go. And I don't know if I'm going to you know, usually scrolls have the little balls on each end, and, you know, Victor put the balls on his, which is where I got my inspiration from. And, um, but I want to, I really liked the way that this was setting up here. I can just set this at the back of my desk right here, so it's right within reach whenever I think I want to mess with it. So if I put the balls on each end, um, I won't be able to stand it up like that. So I think I might just put the balls on one end, the end that will be the top. Um and then not put them on the other end so that I can still stand it up. So we'll see how that works. And hopefully when I go to put the paper on that I get the paper on nicely um, so that they're actually still standing up level next to each other. Okay, and when I did those edges I got quite a bit of paint on the bottom so I want to take that off of there. There we go. And it can just be you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. These are supposed to be scrolls. Scrolls are from, you know, ancient times pretty much. So if it's not totally perfect, you don't have to worry about that. I never worry about totally perfect anyways because actually there's no such thing. And it's all supposed to be about just having the fun of playing. You know, if you're selling something, it's a little bit of a different story and you have to get close. If you're doing it for yourself, have fun. Just go for it and, you know, a little glitch here or there, don't worry about it. And normally, sometimes I get a little bit picky and Papa calls me, he calls me Mama because my mom was a quilter. And if there was, she could be three feet away and notice that three feet back one of her stitches was a little bigger than the rest. And she would take out that three feet and start all over again so that her stitches were all the same size. And I do get picky like that sometimes, and it does take the fun out of things. So, you know, just remember, especially if it's something you're just doing for yourself, have fun with it. And I don't know how much of that you just saw, because I was just watching my paintbrush instead of the camera. There we go. All right, I'm going to do this other end. And then, let's see, I haven't decided if I, I, I was thinking about putting little tissue paper bits on here to give it a lot of texture, and I haven't decided if I'm going to do that yet. Although looking at this one, I'm thinking I might want to do that because that just looks so flat to me. And I really, really like texture. So probably after I get this base coat on, I'm going to get some t little bits of tissue paper, and we're going to glue those on all nice and crinkly, give it some texture. We'll figure out which one's the bottom, which way I'm going to stand it, and I will not put the tissue paper on the bottom. But I will put it on this part, just not the part that will stand on my desk. I wasn't going to do this till this afternoon, but I was so excited to do it that I thought, mm, if I get up early, I might be able to get it done before Papa gets up. Or at least get part of it done before Papa gets up. And if we do the tissue paper, I'm going to have some drying time there anyways. 
because on Thursday, that's the day that I go to town and do the banking and do the grocery shopping. That's the only day I go anywhere unless I've got somebody here to be with Papa. But he does have his new little watch that we got him. So he can call me. All he has to do is push a button on his watch and it will call me. That's really cool. It's just nice to know that he can do that. No, no matter where he is in the house, if something were to happen, all he would have to do is push a button. So, because he, we talked about getting him one of the little emergency button necklaces, things that you can wear, but he just doesn't want one. And it's kind of like, you know, he's 92, he's a grown man. He can do what he wants to do. It's not for us to tell him even that might be what we want for him. we got to let him do what he wants to do. And I think with the watch, he feels, hmm, how do you say it, less helpless? So, you know, if you got to have one of those things around your neck. It's kind of like when he didn't have his driver's license anymore. He was not happy about that, but we had to take that because he, ex he like, passed out and drove off the road. So, luckily, him or Mom weren't hurt, but that was the end of his driving days. Okay, so we've got that done, and now that's just a base coat because we'll have to repaint after we do the tissue paper. But I'm going to really quick turn this off real quick and grab some tissue paper because I've decided I definitely want it there, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. I've cut up a pile of tissue paper, and I've got some balls to put on the top. I wasn't sure what size I wanted, and so I got two sizes. This little one um, was actually a ball, so all I did was I just took a sandpaper and just held it on my desk and rubbed back and forth and back and forth to give me a flat spot so that it would stand on there. And then this one was actually, it had a spot that was flat. But I have decided, Pee Wee... Um, I have decided I like the big one, so um, we're going to use the big ones, and I did heat up my hot glue gun to put that on there. Well, I heated up my hot glue gun, didn't bother to get any glue for it, let's see. There we go, I've got it right here at least, thank goodness. I really love that I've got my craft room cleaned up, everything where it's supposed to be. Okay, yeah, let's put some hot glue on here. I'm not a huge hot glue fan, um, but sometimes it's good. In this case, let me see here, I wanna try and make sure I've got this in the middle. Okay, I think that's good. And then, let's stand these next to each other to see how they do. I don't like that. I think that this is a bottom. And um, it doesn't matter. It's the top now. <laughs> That's just the way things go sometimes. Oh, there we go. That fits nice next to each other. Okay. Now let's get the other one on there real quick. I just wanted it where they stood up next to each other nice. Get this one in the center. Looks pretty good. Yeah, I don't care for hot glue that much because I, with some things I've done in the past, it seems like eventually the hot glue lets loose. But this is just to hold them here so we can get the tissue paper on. The tissue paper is going to be glued on and that's going to hold them on really nicely. So, you know, we're not going to have to worry about them coming loose later on. Um, I am going to, let's see, I've got my glue here. In my trusty little container and this is just two parts glue to one part water and that's what I used to put my tissue paper on and I'm gonna really quick turn my hot glue gun off before I oh I hate these stands they don't hold it up okay now where's my glue this is my glue stick so I'm just gonna get some glue 
get that one out of the way. We're just going to get some glue on here, grab a piece of tissue paper, and just stick it on there. Just let it, just let it crunch up wherever it folds. Let it get creases in it. Just like that. And we're going to put it on the bottom side too, so we're just going to take this one and wrap it right under there. <laughs> Excuse me. And after we um, get this all glued on and just how we want it, we'll let it dry and then um, we'll antique it just like we did this, the uh, center part of the roll here and put the rub and buff on it too. Or if, and if you don't have rub and buff, you can use rub and buff, you can use, um, oh, what do they call the other one? The Inca Golds. Um, and if you don't have that, I have like um, metallic craft paint just in the little jars like this. And it just says it's metallic. Oops, I'm going to grab water instead of glue. That wouldn't work very well. Um, but And I even use the metallic craft paint. So you don't have to have, you know, you don't have to have any of those others. You know, you can always make do with what you have. You don't have to have all the different special things that you see that people have. Um, and if you get them, you know, pick them up a little bit here and there. Don't, you want your crafting to be fun. You don't want to be looking at your craft room thinking, oh, I spent so much money on that. And you also will find that when you watch other people do things and you think, oh, I want to do that. And I need to go get this stuff to do that. Um, and then you do it and you think, oh, I really don't care for this. Now you've just bought all of that stuff and you don't care for it. So, you know, when I first started out with the alcohol links, I made my own. There's tutorials on YouTube for that. And I made my own alcohol ink. And um, and I still use it to this day because I really like the, the ones that I made. Um, and after I found out that I really did love the alcohol inks, um, then I went out and started buying them a little bit at a time using my coupons or getting them in D stashes. And um, so when I use them, it's not like, oh, you know, these were so expensive. And I live an hour away from the nearest craft store because um, we don't have a craft store like Michael's or Joann's or anything in our town. We just have Walmart and they have very few crafts. They cut their crafts down so bad I couldn't believe it um, because they're the only place in town that carries crafts. I'm going to wrap this around the bottom so I'm going to move that down a little bit. But yeah, like this is really pretty tissue paper. I got it at the Dollar Tree. I got some gold and I got some silver. And, um, you know, if I had bought that even at Walmart, it would have cost me way more than a dollar. It's not about what you have, it's about how much fun you have using it. And yes, I know I just did a craft room tour and I know that I have a lot of things, but I don't spend full price. I have been crafting since I was... The first memory that I have is sitting in a high chair probably at about the age of three and we were getting ready to go somewhere and I don't know where. And my mom was trying to keep me quiet while everybody else was getting ready, I was already ready. And so she gave me that green kind of putty um, <laughs> that you use for flowers. Excuse my cough. And um, I sat there in the high chair and played with that putty. So, you know, I mean, that was something that would keep me quiet. Anything that was crafty, I loved it. And that's, that's literally my first memory was basically crafting. I was just making little things out of it. 
So looks like we've got one more spot here, and I just need a little piece of paper, so I'm going to rip that off of there. But, um, yeah, I have, as I was going through the craft room, you know, I came across things, a set of pencils that I got when I was, I don't even think I was a teenager yet. And um, so, yeah, you don't, you know, let it come a little bit at a time. And especially if you're feeling really crafty, if you're really crafty, over the years you're going to have so much stuff. Especially if you're like me and you can't get rid of it. So don't worry about having what everybody else has. Use what you got. Have fun with it. And you'll so much enjoy your crafting even more. And my mom was crafty. So I have her crafty things. And... You know, people that I know are like, oh, gee, you know, like I have this and I don't want it. You know, could you use it? So that's where a lot of my things come from. And when I was younger, and not even like that much younger, when I was in my late 20s and I had my kids, I had a little tiny craft desk in the living room, just a little table. And just very few things, you know. So it just builds up over time. And all of a sudden you say, wow, how did I get all this stuff? Why did I get all this stuff? Because you'll go from one thing to another, too. There we go. That one is covered. Let's get this one covered. I don't have enough glue on there for that size piece. I think this is turning out really cool. I'm so glad that Victor showed us that because it just really got it in my head that I really just wanted to make one. And I really love the art journals that people have and I see them doing, you know, the next page in their art journal and you know, I've got my I've got my mixed media morsels book, which I'm a little behind on after cleaning my craft room, but um, I really like that. And um, but I'm not a big one for making journals, and it takes a long time to make a journal. So I thought this would just be perfect to use as my art journal without taking as much time as it takes to make a journal because this with how long it's going to be it's going to last me a long time you know a journal doesn't have that many pages in it and when you run out you got to make another one and some people that's they really like making the journal so you know that's the fun of it for them and for me I want to get the journal done so I can start playing in it and it's fun, but it's just not as fun as... It's fun making the journal, but to me it's funner just playing in the journal. But, so we're going to... My brother's coming up on Saturday to stay with Papa, and my husband's niece is graduating from college. So we're going to go to her graduation, because it's just in the next big town over so that's going to be really nice so that's this saturday and then um we're going to go to lunch with them after the graduation and they actually live like four hours away from us so we don't see them that often and uh you know everybody's busy none of us can really they don't come down very often and so we're going to get to go and have lunch with them and then next weekend is my oldest daughter's birthday. She's going to be 31 this year. And um, she just moved into a new house that we haven't got to see yet. They moved in a couple months ago. And so my brother's going to come on Friday morning. And um, we're going to go Friday and Saturday. We come home Saturday afternoon. And go spend that time with, with our daughter. So that's going to be a blast two weekends in a row I'm gonna 
like half time off. I can't believe that. And it's very exciting. So, especially to, she's been wanting us to come and see her house and she lives, I say it's two hours. Her and my husband say it's an hour and a half, but they drive faster than I do. So, it's either an hour and a half or two hours away, so we don't actually get up there to see her very often. So, <laughs> they come down quite a bit to visit with us and to see Papa. So, because Mom and Dad have lived next door, um, we bought this property, and then Papa started having problems with his back. And um, my sister said, well, you ought to just move them up here. And I really thought, you know, they still lived in the house that they bought right after they got married. And all of us kids were raised there, and I thought that my mom would absolutely be against it. And I mentioned it to her, and we were walking out to get the mail, and she goes, well, we could put a house right there. <laughs> so they put their house on the other side of the driveway, about halfway up the driveway, because we live on a farm, so the driveway's a little bit long. And um, they've been here since my kids were little. So my kids really grew up with them, almost like being second parents. Well, thank goodness we're right here to the last piece, because that was Papa. And it's, time, and it's time for him to have breakfast. Okay, so I'm going to put this piece on. And then I think what I'll do off camera, because you've seen me do this. Um, and you know, like how we're doing it. So that one's all done. See, I went all the way around the bottom also. And um, what I'll do after Papa's breakfast and stuff, after I get home... No, maybe I'll do it before I leave so it has time to dry. Um, I will just, I'm going to put some right here, and I'm going to put a flat piece on the bottom, and um, and then I'll put it on this one too. And I'll give it texture like I did with these on the top and flat on the bottom. But that's how they look so far. They're looking good. Okay, I'm back, and I've got all the tissue paper on, and they're nice and dry. And I just put some texture here on the inside part and on the bottom just a flat piece just because I didn't want that if I laid it on its side I didn't want to see the bottom of the wood so but I made that nice and flat oh knocked over so they're all set to go all we need to do is put a little bit of I've already got some paint in my container here and we just need to put a little bit of the watered down paint onto our pieces and wipe it off and then we'll have our antiquing on there and then we'll put some rub and buff on top just to sparkle it up a little bit and they will be ready to go I'm so excited I'll be able to actually like use it today that's pretty cool although I don't think I'll have time to use it today but and I didn't make it back yesterday because my husband got rained out of work. And so he came home and stayed with Papa so that I could go to town. And I did a little bit of clothes shopping. I went to the St. Vincent de Paul secondhand store. And they must have had somebody my size that had just got rid of a bunch of clothes because I got a lot. But I haven't bought clothes in a few years. So I've outgrown everything I have. And I wanted something nice for the graduation and something nice to wear up to my daughter's next weekend. So that worked out really nice. But I didn't get home in time to finish this video. But we'll get it today. And there we go. That looks good. Just that, you know, this is the, see the difference between the two. And I just, this is just a little too bright and stark for me. I really like antiquing things and kind of just tones everything down. And it blends it together. 
so and then when you get the rub and buff on there that really makes it look nice my style I like the darker colors the browns and the rusts and the coppers copper is one of my favorite colors but um and I like like the olive greens and that type of thing I'm actually just starting to like brighter colors I used to um everything was always the darker colors but yesterday I bought a bright orange shirt and a bright green shirt and a turquoise shirt I couldn't believe it and as soon as I took them out of the bag Papa was like oh I really like that <laughs> and I tried on one that was the olive green they were all the same shirts and um, I tried on the olive green one and it did not look good on me I'm guessing maybe as you get older and your colors start to change and your hair starts to go gray you need those brighter colors maybe and they make you feel happier or sunnier or something make you feel good but okay this is all antiqued and all we need to do is the rub and buff and then I am going to give it a quick spray with a spray lacquer um, that I just get at Menards um, I use a rust-oleum spray lacquer and I'm going to give it a quick spray with that before I attach the um, wallpaper to it so I'm going to give this a quick hit with the heat gun and then we'll put the rub and buff on Okay, I've got them dry and I got out my Viva Inca Golds instead of the rub and buff because the copper rub and buff that I have is um, it's kind of a black it's called Spanish copper but it's it's almost like a, a tarnished copper or something but it's not the green either so I'm not sure why it's black but um, I did spray my Oh, look at our paper roll is ready to get on there I sprayed this because it was very dry and these do dry out uh, but you spray them with water and just mix it around and I've heard people put uh, baby wipes in there and that type of thing I just like to get it wet when I use it and then I let it sit open actually till it's kind of dry but you just put a little on that finger and just grab the tops of those creases um, now you're not going to just grab the top of the creases you're going to get onto your flat parts also and that just depends on how much you put on your finger as to how much you want on there um, I want a really nice look of copper but I don't want to cover it um, what we've done completely so just give it a rub on there and get it on those creases I already did the other one because I figured you weren't going to really want to watch me do this to the two of them it would just take too long but and I can feel that my um, I'm drying out here so just give it another spray and when you give it a spray and you mix it can't set that on the ball um, when you mix it you're going to have a lot on your finger so make sure that you kind of scrape some of that off or wipe a little bit off or something or you'll get a huge spot um, on your project that you might not want if you get a huge spot on there though that you don't like grab a baby wipe and don't just like rub across it lightly because that will move it but you know get to that one spot that you want to take off and rub it in that spot and it will come off if you do that right away so if you get a spot that you just think I just don't like that there's too much there you can still get a little bit of it off I'm even going to put a little bit on the bottom just so that it all matches because when I'm using it and that bottom is showing you're going to see it get it along those edges let's see it looks like we've already got some on there get these edges yeah this has really been quite fun and other than just getting the time to get in here and do it it has not really taken very long at all just kind of go around the top of that ball get on those creases on the top and when you want to kind of get in there 
between those two pieces if you get the rub and buff kind of just on the very side of your finger that will kind of get into that crease or you can use a little sponge or something to kind of dab some in there if you can't get your finger in there and there we go I think that that's I think that that looks really good so here are both of them and I know the lighting is terrible it's early morning again but um yeah there's both of those and I like the way that they look they're antiqued they've got our beautiful copper on there and I forgot to put copper on the bottom of this one and I do definitely want to do that and I'm dry again If you put a baby wipe or a wet paper towel in these, um, from what I've heard, it will soften up the whole thing. So when you spray it, you're only just you only just start softening up that top layer. There, and I think actually that I do have a little bit more there than I want. Get some water on my baby wipe because it's dry. And I'm just going to take a couple of those spots off. It was just it was just too heavy. It was like all copper, and I didn't want that. There we go. Okay, so we're done. What I am going to do now, because this um, your rub and buffs and your what do they call these again? Um, your metallic, your Inca golds. Um, they dry basically right away so this is dry I dried the paint that we put on there just a little bit ago and um, and that Inca gold just dries right away so these are dry and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them a quick spray of a lacquer and um, then I will bring them back and we will put the paper on okay so I did go ahead and I put some um, lacquer spray on them so now they're nice and shiny and that does dry fairly quickly if you don't put on, you know, heavy layers or more than one layer. And we are on the final stretch. The last thing that we have to do is take our paper roll, and put it underneath our scroll like this, and then we're just going to take some glue, whatever kind of glue that you like, and I'm going to put it just in a little bit from the edge. Um, so that it doesn't, I don't want it to squeeze out the sides. Because I don't want it to catch the next layer of paper. And then I'm just going to slide this over. Kind of eyeball where the center is. And that looks pretty good to me. And then just give that a really good press. Give it just a few seconds I think I used I used fast grab on that so it should grab pretty quickly and then once we start rolling it up that's also going to put some pressure on it and so long as we don't have any coming out the edges up here on the top it's not going to stick to the next layer which if it did stick to the next layer that really wouldn't make much of a difference because it would only stick to that one Alrighty, now just kind of give it a glance, and it does look like I've got about the same amount on each end. So now it's just a matter of rolling. And as you roll it, you want to kind of keep it kind of straight. If it gets a little bit off, you can just give it a push. Give it a wiggle, I guess. Turn your scroll and roll that paper right on there. And just try and keep it straight. And then this is just going to make a really nice art scroll for me. So that I have something to journal in when I feel like it. And really other than, you know, there was some drying time here and there. This was a really quick project. And I did look at the, I pulled the label out of my little garbage here next to the desk and, and checked. And this is 15 feet. So that is going to give me a lot of area to journal. So 
just keep giving it a... You want to try and like adjust it every so often because if you wait till you get all the way to the end I think it might be a little bit difficult. But see that's going on there nice and tight and so that's going to hold it where we glued it. No need to clamp that and wait for it to dry. And this is a really nice bright color here. And so if I find out that uh, I don't like the bright color with my scrolls, then this is a kind of a vinyl type outside. And um, so in order to color that, your acrylic paints and stuff are not going to stick. So if I do decide that I want to color it to match my scrolls, I will just use alcohol ink because the alcohol ink will stick to the vinyl um, and give it color if I decide that I want to do that. And I have not decided yet if I do want to do that. So, okay, now we've got that one. And now all we need to do is put this one here. One more, yeah. I'm gonna roll it one more so that I've got my edge right there, and then I'm gonna glue that side. And again, I'm gonna do it just in a little bit um, from the edge so that it doesn't squish out out of the edge. And as soon as you roll one wrap around there, um, you know, even though there's gonna be just a little bit here at the top edge that does not have glue on it, the second you put one wrap on it, um, that's not going to catch on anything or anything like that. So you do want to make sure that you line these up before you glue that on so that as you're doing your scroll, um, they stay straight. And then maybe I'll just do this. Maybe one more, and there. I can stand it on my desk just like that, and unroll it just like that. Roll it back up. So there we go. You might have to adjust it a little bit sometimes for where your papers are, for them to meet up. There. I really like that. And there's your scroll. And for right now, I'm liking the color on the paper, so I don't think I'm going to color it at all. But if you decide that you don't like your paper color, um, you can always decide. Oh, and the one thing that I forgot to say was um, if you have a wallpaper border that does have a top and a bottom, and you make your scroll so it will stand up, you're going to want to make sure that you do put the top of, the, of your design at the top so that you're not looking at it upside down. That was one thing that I had figured out before I started, but I forgot to tell you um, to do that because it might, you know, if you've got it sitting on your desk and you see now I can set it on my desk this way so that this is facing me. And look, I have that beautiful picture right there to look at. So, and then the scroll parts on the back. So, yeah, I think it's cool. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.